The reality of the Gospel World Outreach Ministries presents the Voice of Deliverance broadcast, featuring the explosive preaching, bold teaching, and the powerful prayer of deliverance of Heaven's Ambassador, Leonard Ford. Brother Ford is a minister that does what others don't, and he has a ministry that goes where others won't. He and his wife, Jesse travel across America and around the world, preaching hope and bringing deliverance. Whether they are in the church, under the gospel tent, or on the mission field, they boldly declare that if you continue in the word, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now I present to you, Brother Ford. Day 217, even so what? Faith, if it has not what? Works, corresponding actions, corresponding acts of obedience is what? Dead being what? Wait a minute. Faith without works makes faith alone. So if we're going to have faith, faith needs some company. I know, see, faith is not the long range. He needs Tonto. He needs, he, he needs somebody to call him Kimo Sabe. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith. Let me say it like this. A man may say he has faith and have not works. Show me your faith without your works. And I'm going to show you my faith by my works. Now we're in Mark 11. Mark 11. I'm just trying to tell you that you can't sit on the bench or on the couch and be lazy and think your faith is going to work. Mark 11, verse 22. And Jesus answering, just that statement right there tell you I started in the middle of something, right? Answering said unto them. Now it's amazing when you read that, Peter is the one that asked the question, but it doesn't say Jesus answering him. He, he knew all of them wanted to know. Peter was just a spokesman. Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in God. That's what I want to talk about tonight. Have faith in God. I don't preach all kind of sermons on faith, but I never remember preaching a message on have faith in God. And so I just want to talk about tonight, have faith in God. Now I understand that if you look this up in the uh, Adams Clark particularly, It'll say, have the faith of God. But tonight, let's just stay with Jesus. Okay? Let's just have faith in God. And, and some people think that faith, by definition, is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. That's not a definition. You look it up in a dictionary, you won't find that. Okay? So, have the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen in God. You see that don't fit, right? Okay, so Jesus here was coming through Bethany and he saw a fig tree that had leaves on it and customarily in the Middle East, even though it ain't the season for figs, if there's leaves, there's fruit. So the fig tree basically told Jesus, you can eat here. Now Jesus was hungry, so the tree lied to him. When he went to the tree, there was nothing there. Okay, go, go to verse 13. Go, roll up, roll up, roll up. Yeah, I go already. Seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves. So see, he was so far away from it, he couldn't see what was on the tree. He could just see the leaves. So when he went to the tree, because that's a summons. If you see leaves, there's fruit there. And when you, how many know when you're hungry, you want to eat? So watch this now. When he came to it, so you see the tree summons him. The tree said, come on over here, I'm going to feed you. The tree summons him. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For the time of fig was not yet. Jesus did what? No, no, no. What did what the scripture say? He answered. Now, now, how dumb would this be? If I just walked up to Cinderella and said, uh, no, I don't think so. She didn't ask me anything, right? So where does her mind go from, no, I don't think so. No, you don't think so. What? What, what you're telling me you don't think so. 
So he had to have heard something from the tree in order to answer the tree. Do you understand? So the tree was talking. I, you know, you got situations talking to you. You got circumstances talking to you. You need to answer them. Yeah. <laughs> How am I going to answer? You're going to have faith in God. So he answered the tree. He said, no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. So when you got real faith, you ain't bashful. You're not ashamed to say, hallelujah. You're not ashamed to answer the situation. So I'm talking about tonight, have faith in God. Have confidence in God. Have full, unqualified, committed trust in God. But in the day and time that we live in, going back down, we're in verse 22. Jesus answering them. So Peter then came. Well, let's go to verse 20 so we can at least catch the context of that. And in the morning, so he spoke to this tree within 24 hours. In the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. That's another point we need to understand. When Jesus is speaking to a situation in your life, he don't speak to the leaves. He don't speak to the limbs. He speaks to the root. Too many of us, amen, are raking leaves and cutting limbs. And the tree's still in the way. He said, Master, behold, look. See, Peter mesmerized. He's shocked. The fig tree which thou cursest, pause. Did we hear Jesus curse the tree? It didn't sound like he said, tree, I curse you from the root. The word that he spoke, full of faith, saying, no man eat of thee, henceforth, forever. That wasn't positive. <clears throat> it was so full of faith that it called that tree to wither from the root. Why? Because what he said had to come to pass because he had faith in God when he said it. He believed when he said it, the tree was going to die from the root. Sometimes we speak the thing and we still see the leaves the next morning. So, mm. Think about it. He spoke to that tree that morning. They went in the city. He come back and now you know he's just like most of us. He's a route driver. He walked the same path. The tree was right there looking like nothing had changed. Your situation look at you every day. Like you, I heard what you said. I heard my wife while I go saying it looked like for years and years and years nothing was changing, but it was changing from the root. Other than that, that's a whole dynamic of you got to establish your faith in your heart while you work on the principle, even though it's a spiritual law. There's levels of maturity, levels of confidence, levels of consistency. But what I want you to focus on tonight, I got to have faith in God before I speak so I can have faith in God when I speak. 2 Corinthians 4 and 13 says, I believe, therefore I speak. So I'm not speaking to persuade you. I'm speaking because I'm persuaded. See, when I got faith in God, I believe what I'm about to say before I say what I'm going to say. So when I say it, I said it in faith. And that's what I'm seeing now. I see a lot of people saying positive things, but there's no weight of faith. There's no content of faith in the thing. And we got to go back to the word of God and begin to meditate the word and stop speaking so quick. So, here's one of the dilemmas in the body of Christ, particularly in the word of faith camp. God told me this in 2012. Somebody invited me to do a revival. I said, let me pray about it. I prayed about it for a couple of days and God spoke to me that third morning and said, I want you to accept the invitation for the revival. So I called the pastors back and I said, I feel the peace of God. You can go ahead on and book the revival and I'll get you some flyers. As soon as I hung the phone up, God said, I don't want you to run a revival. I said, why are you telling me to accept the invitation? He said, I want you to do a faith clinic. You know what I said, don't you? I ain't never done no faith clinic. I don't know how to do no faith clinic. He said, I do. I said, you show in control of this one because I can't make this work without you. And the first thing God showed me for the opening night, he began to tell me, he said, son, you, are, you, you have got uh, the, the principles out of order. So I want you to teach on the fundamentals of faith. He said, and what you got to understand in the faith camp, particularly when you go to church. And at that time, Pastor Carwell was my pastor. He said, and you hear Pastor Carwell teach a message on something that's not in your life that you want to bring into your life. He asked the question, what's the first thing? you do? I said, I'm confessing that thing tomorrow. He said, that's what's wrong. I said, what? He said, yeah, that's what's wrong. You're confessing something you ain't got faith for yet. 
You just heard the word yesterday. You heard the word that morning, and then the next morning you confessing it. He said, no, no, the first step after hearing the word is meditation. Joshua 1 and 8, this book of the law. One more, you got to spend some time in meditation. So God was showing me that we think we were operating in faith, and we're already off kilter. We're already, amen, out of adjustment, out of line. So we got to get in divine alignment before our faith begins to work. God gave every man the measure of faith. We have to develop that faith, but we also have to learn how to use the faith. All right, some of you know how to drive very well. Hey, Amen. You got a good driving record. You ain't had a ticket in 20 years. Go buy you a new luxury car. You don't run like that Chevy. You get in there, and especially now you get in the, you, your Chevy had a key. You get in the luxury car, it's got a button. And you, you sitting there looking, like, wait, how does this work? Your mirrors fold in. There's that thing that your console is different. Your dashboard is different. Your AC don't work by that little switch. Oh, how you get to her on? Read the manual. What? Read the manual. That's boring. Sit in the driveway. No, 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 no. I know what you're going to do. You're going to call your grandson. And you're going to Google. Google. How does a, 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 no, 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 no. What am I trying to tell you? If you just read the manual, my wife was telling me the other day about one of the relatives, amen, then had a nice luxury car for a couple of years and just found out where a compartment for the key was because somebody riding would have told her. Some, another, see what, if you, you got a manual, it would have told you. See, when I bought my new trunk, before I left a lot, I'm on the manual. I got the brother out to come on out here and say, oh, man, we ain't finna leave yet. Get in here. Program this thing because my, my, you know, my truck got a, a, an app to it. I can start my truck from my phone. I can open my tailgate from my phone. Well, let's find out how this works before I get on the road. And we got, I said, no, no, no. Don't do it. Show me. Get the manual out. Let me follow the direction. See what's going on. So if this ain't working, what's next? That man ain't got time for that. He don't. I didn't know that. He had time for me that day. He took the time for me because I took the time to ask questions. Okay, let me, let me go ahead and get in this. Let me get in this. So Jesus here has spoken in faith. He spoke in full-blown confidence with full-blown expectation of what he said come to pass. His disciples heard it, but yet they didn't believe it. They didn't see the inside, the depth of it. They didn't see the inner workings of it. They didn't see the inroads to it. They just heard him talk to a tree. If you hear somebody talking to a tree and you don't understand the principles, what's going through your mind? Don't answer that. Because you think they're crazy. The boy talking to a tree. You Now, why you want to make him crazy? You talk to your dishwasher. You talk to your car. You talk to your electric can opener. Now, can opener, don't you start no mess? I got too many number 10 cans to open a day. And you know I got arthritis in my left hand. I can't be turning that thing. You got to work. You don't call you crazy. You put your clothes in that washing machine, it fill up, it don't spin. Wash machine, what's wrong? You better spin. You better work. What are you doing? Who taught you to talk to it? It's something in the spirit of man innately knows that he releases faith. He releases authority with his words and everything he's talking to got ears to hear him. Go back in the book of Genesis. Everything God created, he spoke to it. And everything that's created now, he gave you dominion over it. But I would know your dominion does not work void of your faith. And your faith works through your words. And it's something in your spirit. Whether you saved or not, you will speak to a dog that don't belong to you and tell that dog to get out your pathway. Now you know you ain't barking, but you know when I speak that dog better obey me. It's in your spirit. That's how faith works. But the problem is some of you speak like it get. And you get you, you ain't dog ain't finna you don't you don't believe he gonna get you 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 get 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 now he gonna get you that's what's gonna get you you gonna get got because you ain't bold enough to stand there and say get out of here you mutt let me get back to the scripture. Let me get back to the scripture. So now, now we see verse 22. So when Peter said this, Jesus answered him, you heard me speak yesterday, Peter. When I spoke, I knew this was going to happen. When I spoke, I saw it in my spirit before I ever released my words. Peter, I had an inner image. I had an image inside of me that I knew was going to make that thing wither up. So he said, Peter, here's what I need you to do. Have faith in God. Have confidence in God. Be fully persuaded that when you speak in obedience to 
God, which Jesus always did. He said, I only say what I hear the Father say. So Peter, be fully persuaded when you speak in obedience to God, when you speak in line with the word of God, and when you speak the word of God, have full confidence that it must come to pass because God said in Isaiah 55 and 11, so shall my word be, it goes forth out of my mouth, it shall not return to me void. Didn't say it wasn't coming back, but it ain't coming back empty. It's not going to come back disappointed. It's going to accomplish the thing where unto I plead. It's going to prosper in the thing where unto I sent it. When you open your mouth, are you sending your words? Are you sending your faith? The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 5, talks about the servant. Your faith supposed to serve you. Are you using your faith like a tool? See, most of us, our words are just for conversation. Your words are supposed to be for creation. Go back and read the, 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 the Genesis account. When you see God making man, now I'm talking about the second chapter now. He created him in the first chapter. When God makes man, puts man in his body, you hear no communion between God and man. You don't hear God talking to Adam, and you don't hear Adam talking to God. You see God planting the garden. Now, first thing he did after he made man, God began to demonstrate. Man is watching, observing God. And then, around about verse 18, the next chapter, after God had given man some instructions, then God start bringing stuff to man. And then God does say, now Adam, the one with the long snout, that's an anteater. Adam, the one with the long neck, that's a giraffe. He brought it to Adam to see what Adam by faith is going to call it. Adam opened his mouth, used his faith and his authority, and named everything on the planet, and God said it was so. We are supposed to be using our faith. And the only reason we're we trying to get God to do everything he created us to do. Have faith in God. Watch this, watch this now. So understand, they heard Jesus speak. And then when they saw the results of what he had spoken, they came to him and said, the words you spoke to that tree have come to pass in 24 hours. And it's withered it from the root. And Jesus said unto them, have faith in God for verily, truly, honestly, straight up, for real, 100. I say unto you that whosoever, that levels of playing field, not to the apostle, not the prophet, not the pastor, not the teacher. Whosoever, let me say it like this, that has faith in God shall say unto this mountain, drop the T, and it becomes personal, his mountain. He looked at a mountain and said, whosoever that has faith in God and is speaking in line with the word of God, is speaking in obedience to God, is speaking God's word to his mountain, and then watch, watch the, the, the clarify you here. He said, tell the mountain to be thou remembered moved and be cast into the sea. You didn't just sit there and talk to the mountain. Mountain, you know you're pretty big. Mountain, I ain't never dealt with nothing like you. Mountain, you know I'm not even sure if I can get around you. But I bet you what? I bet you I can climb you. Mountain, see, you're having a conversation with the mountain. But that's not a faith conversation. The conversation to the mountain is a faith-filled, authoritative sentence. Mountain, in the name of Jesus, Get out of my way. Not, not, from, not from a cliche formulated standpoint. I'm talking about walking by faith. Faith is a spiritual force. So I'm walking in the spirit. I'm listening to the leadership of the spirit. I don't just say stuff because that's what Pastor Jackson said. I'm saying it because I only say what I hear the Father say. So my faith in God is to the point to where if he don't speak, I don't speak because I'm operating by faith in him. If he says it, he's not a man that he should lie. Not the son a man that he should repent. If he says, shall he not do it? If he speak it, will he not bring it to pass? Will he not make it good? His word is truth. He cannot lie. It's impossible for God to lie. So therefore, once I hear God, who said in Psalms 89, I will not alter the thing that goes forth out of my lip. Once I hear God say something, now I got faith to repeat what he said, knowing he told Jeremiah, Jeremiah 1 and 12, I watch for my word. I watch over my word. I hasten my word to perform it, to bring it to pass. So what I need to operate in faith, I need a word from God. Okay, Shabbat Yashu, And watch this now, watch this. And shall not doubt, shall not waver, shall not be uncertain, shall not vacillate, shall not oscillate in his heart, in his spirit, in his core, in his inner man, but shall believe, shall trust, shall adhere to with an unqualified commitment that those things which he say under the inspiration of faith, which he say in obedience to the leading of the Spirit of God, shall come to the past, he shall have whatsoever he shall. I submit to 
you hundreds of believers and maybe some of us hundreds of times have said things that were true, that were uh, positive, but yet we were not fully persuaded when we spoke. Therefore, we did not get the results. Therefore, we teach erroneous doctrine. Now, you, you better be wise when it comes to that faith stuff. Now, that faith stuff will mess you up. No, no, no. That fake stuff will mess you up. Because the just shall live by his faith. Habakkuk said by his faith. Paul told us three times the just shall live by faith. Then Paul told us in the second chapter of Corinthians 5 and 7, we walk by faith. Faith, not by sight. So faith stuff don't mess you up. Misunderstanding faith will mess you up. They used to sing a song in the Baptist church. Uh, one of Dr. Wassel's hymns is, uh, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. One of, the, one of the phrases of it was, Although I move so slow, I wait until the Spirit comes and I move at his command. That's what we missed. See, you, you, you jumping out there without his leading, without his command, and then wondering, God, where you at? God, who sent you? Have faith in God. Watch the principle now. Because they're talking about the fig tree that he cursed, the fig tree that you use your faith-filled words on, the fig tree that you spoke to. Jesus said, have faith in God. Peter is talking about the results of him having spoken, and Jesus answered, have faith in God, for verily I tell you, truly I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, do you understand the man that saw a tree? Now, when you start talking about a fig tree in the Middle East, amen, he's talking about a tree. He ain't talking about some little sapling here. And he said, I've seen it withered up from the root. Jesus' answer was have faith in God, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say wait a minute, my faith in God is connected to what I say, so what I say must stay connected to faith in God, so what I say should not be uttered without confidence in God. Now watch verse 24. He, he said, whatever he saith, shall, he shall have whatever he saith. Therefore I say Wait, wait a minute, let's read verse 23 again. Verily I say unto you, what things soever you say, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not die in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he what? Say a brother continues habitually. See, sometimes here's what happens. Here's what happens. You in church, or you in your time alone with God alone, and the anointing of God comes on you, and the Holy Ghost gives you utterance, and you make some bold, anointed, faith filled declaration under that anointing. And then about 45 minutes later, after you had your salad and your sandwich and your mind and got relaxed and got off of God, all of a sudden the situation pops up and you start, Lord, I thought you had took care of that. What? Wait, 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 wait. You don't pray one thing, now you're saying another. See, what are you what you're saying is overthrowing what you've been praying. You, your praying and your saying gotta be synchronized. They gotta stay lined up. If you prayed it, then if whatever you pray should be what you say. Don't you let your saying undermine your praying, and don't let your praying undermine your saying. You made a confession under the anointing, and then you go pray, Lord, please, Jesus. No, 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 no. See, you, it ain't time for you to talk yet. You need to go back to the meditation table. Because until you get faith in God, zip it. Your word, listen, your thoughts don't do near what your words do. How do I know? Jesus said, take no thought how? Saying. So if I don't, if I don't speak the thought, it dies unborn. But once I say it out of my mouth, see, my mouth reveals my will. God's mouth reveals his will, right? The hand of God performed what the mouth of God says. Where well, angels hearken to the voice of the word of God. So when I open my mouth and I say things out of my emotions, I say things out of my desperation, I say things when I'm under pressure and I'm afraid, then all of a sudden, if, if I'm talking contrary to the word, my angels have no choice. They must stand down because they cannot operate opposite the word of God. What happens when my angels stand down, demons step up and go to work on the words out my mouth. I'm saying say, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, that with a burning fire, love Jesus, yes I do, don't dip, smoke, or chew, don't hang with you if you do, but I'm finna be defeated because I'm not in faith, and I'm saying words that are 
activating demons in my life. I'm giving demons liberty. I'm giving place to the devil with my word. That's why David said, I think it was Psalm 39. He said, while the wicked is before me, I'm going to keep my mouth. See, we just think about wicked people. There are wicked spirits that need your words. Why do you think the devil is trying to manipulate you to talk negative, talk wrong? Because until you do, he can't do nothing. He's bound or he's loose by your words. Death and life is in the power of your tongue. And you that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And we understand that my lips got to be lips of faith. My tongue's got to be a tongue of faith. My spirit has got to be a spirit of faith. And I got to get the word of God in me. I got to meditate the word of God. So that when I open my mouth, I open my mouth with a consciousness that I'm about to release life or death. I'm about to release victory or bondage. I'm about to release victory or defeat out of my mouth. The devil cannot defeat me without my words. Because listen, my quality of life in the kingdom of God is conceived by my thoughts. That's why I meditate upon the word of God. It is confirmed by my words. That's why I meditate before I speak. I think before I speak. Then it's going to be conceived. It's going to be conceived by my choices. What I think and say determine what I choose. But then it's going to be constructed by my daily activity. Look at what you're doing every day. If you want to know why, roll back to what you've been saying and thinking. Now we're in verse 24. Therefore, therefore is a conjunction. Now I understand. Now listen, I understand some of you from the Word of Faith camp, and you, you have heard that, well, it's three times more. The word say is in that verse three times more than the word believe. Okay, with tonight, do me, do, do me the service of skipping that. And jump from verse 22 to the end of verse 23. Have faith in God, then you get what you say. Because if you say it a thousand times with no faith in God, you get nothing. So just because you say it 355,000 times don't mean it's going to manifest. And you know what you're going to say? Now I confess that 355,000 times. I ain't, I ain't saying that mess no more. It never was a mess. You just messed it up. Okay, so now Jesus lays down a principle. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, whoever's got faith in God, their heart is a heart filled with faith. He believes what he said. You know, a lot of folks don't believe what they say when they say it. You ever talk to somebody and they tell you something three days later? Well, I ain't believe in no way. What you waste my time for? You didn't believe in no way. Why well, didn't I really never didn't think it was gonna happen? Why did you bother me? Tell me, let's agree in prayer, and you wasn't even agreeing. But Jesus lays down a principle that when a man has faith in God, believes in his heart, that what he says should come to pass, he should have whatsoever he habitually says, right? Therefore I say. Because I understand this principle, now I'm about to talk. I'm not talking foolish. I'm not talking flippant because I understand this. Therefore, I say courage through the uncompromising message that you heard today. If you would like to have this message in its entirety, send $8 for compact disc or $20 for video to the Reality of the Gospel Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box 1640-91, Little Rock, Arkansas. 72216. If you would like to become a partner with this ministry, you may do so by joining the Ally 200 Club at $25 a month, or you may become a Truth Ally for $10 or more each month. Send your offerings to the Reality of the Gospel Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box 164091, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72216. If you continue in God's Word, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free.